Ever wonder why it feels like the internet is reading your mind? Spoiler alert, it is. And it's using that info to sell you stuff that you don't need, convince you to vote a certain way, and generally make you feel inadequate. If you're new here, hey, I'm Slissa Gerbils, and over here, we like to question everything, especially the polarizing figures and companies that shape our world. If that sounds like your vibe, then like and subscribe. I'm going to preface this with, no, I don't think all data collection is inherently evil. However, I do feel like it's important to highlight the dangerous side of it and how to protect yourself against it. For starters, let's explain exactly what data is. I feel like this is just a term that is thrown around now and nobody really goes into depth on what exactly they mean by data collection. Think of data like digital breadcrumbs. Every time you use the internet, search, shop, watch videos, you leave little breadcrumbs behind. On their own, they don't mean much, but when companies collect a bunch of them, then they can start to get a picture of exactly who you are, what you like, and even what you might do next. And that's exactly why everybody is interested in collecting it. Here's some everyday examples. Your streaming habits. Platforms like Netflix track what you watch, when you pause, how long it takes you to finish a series, and even the device you're using. This helps them recommend you shows and plan new content. Online shopping. Amazon collects data on what you browse, buy, and review. Your location. Your phone tracks your previous location through GPS, even if you're not actively using the Maps app. This data can be used for targeted ads or even by law enforcement when needed. Social media activity. Platforms like Facebook monitor clicks, likes, and comments to build a profile of your interests and serve you tailored ads or content that keeps you scrolling. Smart devices. Your smartwatch tracks your heart rate, steps, and sleep patterns. Some insurance companies are even using this data to adjust premiums based on your health habits. Drive through orders. Even fast food chains like McDonald's track what people order through their apps or drive through systems to adjust staffing levels or promote specific menu items based on the weather, like advertising cold drinks on a really hot day. And of course, web searches. Every search query you type into Google is logged into refined search results and show you ads relevant to your interests. So you've probably heard of the phrase, data is the new oil. It sounds cliche, but it's true. Just like oil fuels our cars, data fuels the modern economy. It's the raw material that powers targeted advertising, personalization, and even product development. Every time you search something on Google, buy something on Amazon, or scroll through your social media feed, you're generating data. And companies are collecting it like crazy. And this is where big data comes in. We're talking about massive amounts of information that are far too complex for traditional processing. But with the rise of supercomputers and sophisticated algorithms, companies can now analyze that data to understand customer preferences, predict trends, and even influence your behavior. Let's say you're searching for a recipe. You can expect to see ads that show you the best food processors or blenders because they know that you're going to be more likely to purchase something like that since you were searching up recipes. It's like a crystal ball or, you know, a really powerful algorithm. So how does this all translate into influencing your choices? Well, it's all about personalization. Companies use your data to create a unique profile about you, then tailoring everything you see online to match your interests and preferences. Netflix suggests movies you might like, Spotify creates personalized playlists, and Amazon shows you products you're most likely to buy. It's convenient, sure, but it's also incredibly powerful. And this is where behavioral targeting comes in. Algorithms analyze your online behavior, what you click on, what you search for, and what you like, and then use that information to create targeted ads that are designed to grab your attention. Did you know that some websites change prices based on your location? Or that airlines use your browsing history to determine how much to charge you for a flight? Yep, that's a thing. But that's a whole other topic for another video that I am doing soon. Platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok are designed to be addictive, and they use algorithms that show you content that will keep you scrolling for hours. All of that scrolling is generating more and more data that can be used to influence your opinion and buying habits. The whole data-driven world raises some serious ethical questions, like what happens when companies misuse your data, or when they try to manipulate you, and what happens to your privacy. 
the potential for data misuse is huge. Companies can use your data to discriminate against you, target you with misleading information, or even to manipulate your emotions. Remember the Cambridge Analytica scandal? A company harvested data from millions of Facebook users and used it to create targeted political ads that may have influenced the outcome of the 2016 election, allegedly. Data breaches are another major concern. Hackers are constantly trying to steal your personal information, and if they succeed, it can lead to identity theft, financial fraud, and a whole lot of other headaches. And let's not forget about the erosion of trust. When companies are constantly collecting and using your data without your knowledge or consent, it can erode your trust in them and the entire digital ecosystem. It sounds pretty bleak, right? But don't despair. There are some things that you can do to protect your privacy and regain some control over your data. First of all, it's important to understand how data is collected and how it's used. Read the privacy policies. Yes, I know it's a snooze fest, but it can be important. And also pay attention to the permissions that you grant apps and be mindful of what you share online. Using strong passwords, enabling two-factor authentication, adjusting your privacy settings, using a VPN, deleting cookies, and using privacy-focused search engines like DuckDuckGo, which does not track your searches. Finally, it's crucial to develop digital literacy and critical thinking skills. Be skeptical of what you see online, question the source of information, and don't believe everything you read. So what does the future hold for data? data and consumer behavior. While the landscape is constantly evolving, data regulations are becoming more strict, like the GDPR in Europe and the CCPA in California, but companies are also finding new ways to collect and use your data. The key to navigating this future is ethical and transparent data practices. Companies need to be upfront about how they're collecting and using your data, and they need to give you more control over your information. Also need to hold companies accountable for their data practices support organizations that are fighting for data privacy rights, and demand that your elected officials take action to protect your privacy. The data-driven world is here to stay, but it does not have to be a dystopian nightmare. By understanding how your data is used, taking steps to protect your privacy, and demanding ethical data practices, we can create a future where technology empowers us rather than controls us. What do you guys think about this? Are you guys worried about your data privacy? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and also hit the notification bell so that you never miss a chance to question everything with me. As always, stay curious, stay skeptical, and always question everything, even me. Oh yeah, and click here for the next perfectly curated video that I personally have selected just for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.